So taking a look at problem number nine, it says that we need to simplify. Well, I know part of simplifying means that I'm going to have to factor this guy in the top. That also means that I'm going to have to factor this guy in the bottom as well, because simplifying means to factor anything that can be factored first and then do the mathematics that's involved. Well, taking a look at the green right here, if I factor this out, I need two numbers that would multiply to give me negative 24, but add to give me a positive 2. So taking a look at that, that's going to mean that I can use a negative 6 and a positive 4, because negative 6 plus 4 is a positive 2. No, that doesn't work. I need to change this to a positive 6, and this is going to turn into a negative 4. That works out better. So taking a look here, that means that this is going to be x plus 6 over x minus 4. And then across the bottom, taking a look at what that's going to factor into, I need two numbers that will multiply to give me negative 12, but add to give me negative 1. So taking a look at this, I can say negative 4 and positive 3. Double checking that. Negative 4 times 3 is, is a negative 12. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. So this fraction is going to be x minus 4 over x plus 3 after it factors. Now bringing this entire fraction down, I can just say that it's x plus 3 over x plus 6. And because it's multiplication, I can just go ahead and say that everything gets pushed right next to each other. Now that all of these fractions are in one big gigantic fraction, I can start crossing out common factors. Well, taking a look, this x plus 3 and this x plus 3 can cancel out. This x plus 6 and this x plus 6 can cancel out. And this x minus 4 and this x minus 4 can cancel out. Everything has canceled out. That means that for my final answer, I can say that when everything crosses out, it's not zero. When it's division, it's one. And so my final answer is one.